inside the fake like factories. Um, I'm going to date myself. I remember it was like the, it was the Congress around 1990 or 1991 or so, where I was sitting together with some people who came over to the states to visit the uh, the CCC Congress, and we were kind of riffing on how great the internet is going to make the world, you know, how how it's going to bring world peace and truth will rule and everything like that. Boy, were we naive. <laughs> Boy, were we totally wrong. And today, I'm going to be schooled in how wrong I actually was, because we have uh, Svea, Dennis, and Philip to tell us uh, all about the fake-like factories around the world. And with that, could you please help me in, uh, in welcoming, them, welcoming them onto the stage? Svea, Dennis, and Philip, thank you very much. Yeah, welcome to our talk uh, inside the fake like factories. So, my name is Philip. Uh, I'm an internet activist uh, against disinformation, and I'm also a student of the University of Bamberg. Hi, thank you that you, yeah, that you listen to us tonight. My name is Svea. I'm an investigative journalist, freelance mostly for NDR and ARD. It's a public broadcaster in Germany and I focus on tech issues. And I had the pleasure to work with these two guys on, for me, a journalistic project, and for them, on a scientific project. Yeah, hi, everyone. My name is Dennis. Uh, I'm a PhD student from Ruhr University Bochum. I'm working as a research assistant as the, uh, for the chair for system security. And my research focuses on network security topics and internet measurements, and as so as I said, Philip and myself, we are here for the scientific part and Svea is for the journalistic part here. So, so uh, here's our outline for today. So first, uh, I'm going to briefly talk about our motivation for our descent into f the fake-like factories. And then we are going to show you how we got our hands on 90,000 fake-like campaigns of a major crowd-working platform. And we are also going to show you why we think that there are 10 billion registered Facebook users today. So first I'm going to talk about the like button. The like button is the ultimate uh, indicator for popularity on social media. Uh, it shows you how trustworthy someone is. It, it shows how, how uh, popular someone is. It shows uh, it is an indicator for economic success of brands, and it also influences the Facebook algorithm. And as we are going to show now, um, these kind of likes can be easily forged and manipulated. But the problem is that many users will still prefer this bad info on Facebook about popularity of a project to no info at all. And so this is a real problem. And there's no, no real solution to this. Um, so first, we are going to talk about the factories and the workers in the fake like factories. That there are fake likes and that you can buy likes everywhere, it's well known. So if you Google buying fake likes or even fake comments for Instagram or for Facebook, then you will get like hundreds of results and you can buy them very cheap and very expensive doesn't matter you can buy them from every country but when you think of this bought likes then you may think of this so you may think of somebody sitting in China Pakistan or India and you think of computers and machines doing all this and that they are yeah that they are fake and also that they can easily be detected and that maybe they are not a big problem. But it's not always like this. It also can be like this. So I want you to meet Maria. Um, I met her in Berlin. And Harald, he lives near Mönchengladbach. So Maria, she is a, uh, she's a rentiree. She was a former police officer. And as money is always short, she um, she's clicking uh, Facebook likes for money. So she earns between two cents and six cents per like. 
And Harald, um, he was a baker once. He is now uh, getting uh, social aid. And he's also clicking and liking and commenting uh, the whole day. We um, met them during our research project and did some interviews uh, about their likes. And one platform they are clicking and working for is paid likes. It's only one platform out of a universe, out of a cosmos. Paid likes, they are sitting just a couple of minutes from here in Magdeburg. And they are offering that you can earn money with liking on different platforms. And it looks like this. When you log into the platform with your Facebook account, then you get in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, you get we call it campaigns, um, but these are pages, Facebook fan pages, or Instagram pages, or posts, or comments. You can, you know, you can work your way through them and click them. And I blurred, you see here the, the blue bar, I blurred them because we don't want to get sued from all these companies, um, which you can see there. To take you a little bit with me on the journey, um, Harald, he, he was okay uh, with us coming by for television, and he was okay that, and we did a long interview with him, and I want to show you a very small piece out of his daily life, sitting there, doing the household, the washing and the cleaning, and clicking. Das geht so einen ganzen Tag, also ich muss mal wirklich den Kopf schütteln, ob das jetzt auch wieder an äh, Pizzeria, auch bei Instagram eine Pizzeria aus dem Münchner Raum ist, der jetzt irgendwo ein Bild macht von seiner neuesten Pizza-Kreation. Es ist alles Mögliche. Quer durch den, quer durch den Garten, ob das äh, Politiker sind oder Hundezüchtervereine oder Karatevereine. Mhm. Jetzt muss ich lediglich Gefällt mir drücken und schon habe ich Geld verdient. Come on! Could be, could be like that. You click and you earn some money. How, how did we meet him and um, all the others? Of course, um, because Philip and Dennis, they have a more scientific approach. So it was also important not only to talk to one or two, but to talk to many. So we created a Facebook fan page, which we call like a line under a line, uh, because I thought, okay, nobody would like this freely. And then we did a post, this post, and we bought likes. And you won't believe it, and it, it worked so well. 222 people, or the people I paid for, um, liked this. And then uh, we wrote all of them. And we talked to many of them, uh, some of them only in writing, some of them only we just called or had, had a phone chat. But they gave us a lot of information about their life as a click worker which I will sum up. So what Paylikes by itself says, they say that they have 30,000 registered users. And it's really interesting because you might think that they are all registered with like 10 or 15 accounts, but most of them, they are not. They are clicking with their real account, which makes it really hard to, de to detect them. So they, um, they even, um, they even uh, scan their ID um, so that the company knows that they are real, then they earn their money. And we met men, women, um, stay-at-home moms, low-income earners, retirees, people who are getting social care. So basically anybody. So it, there was no kind of bias. And many of them are clicking for two and more platforms. It was... I. I didn't met anybody who is only clicking for one platform. They all have a variety of platforms where they are writing comments or clicking likes. And you can make, this is what they told us, between 15 euro and 450 euro monthly if you are a so-called power clicker and you do this somewhere kind of um, professional. But these are only the workers and maybe you are more interested in who are the buyers, who benefits. Yeah, um, yeah, let's come to step two, who benefits from the campaigns. So I think you all remember this page. Uh, this is a screen if you log into paid likes and um, yeah, you see the campaigns with, um, yeah, you have to click in order to get a little bit of money. And um, by luck, we noticed that um, 
if we go over a URL, we see in the left bottom side of the browser a URL redirecting to the campaign uh, you have to click. And you see that every campaign is using a unique ID. It is just a simple integer. And the good thing is, it is just incremented. So now maybe some of you guys uh, notice what can we do with that. And um, yeah, it is really easy with this uh, constructed URLs to implement a crawler for data gathering. And um, our crawler simply requested all campaign IDs between 0 and 90,000. Maybe some of you ask why 90,000? Um, as I already said, we also registered as a click worker, and we, see, uh, we saw that the highest ID campaign used is about 88,000. So we thought, OK, 90,000 is a good value. And um, we checked for every request between these 90,000 requests if it got resolved or not. And if it got resolved, the re redirected URL represents the source that should be liked or followed. And we did not save the um, page sources from the uh, resolved URLs. We only uh, save the um, resolved URLs in a list of campaigns. And uh, yeah, this list was then the basis for our further analysis. And um, yeah, here you see our list. Yes, uh, this was the point when uh, Dennis and Philip, when they, they came to us and said, hey, we have a list, so what can you find? And of course, we searched for AFD, was one of the first search queries. And um, yeah, of course, AFD is also in that list, maybe not so surprisingly for some. And uh, when you look, it is AFD Gelsenkirchen and uh, the fan page. And uh, we asked uh, AFD Gelsenkirchen, did you buy likes? And they said, oh, we don't know how we got on that list. But however, we do not rule out an anonymous donation. <laughs> but now you would think, OK, they found AFD. This is uh, very expected. But, but now, all political parties, mostly with local and regional entities, showed up on that list. So we have CDU, CSU. We have had FDP, S SPD, AFD, Die Grünen, and Die Linke. But not that you think Angela Merkel or some very big um, Facebook fan pages showed up. No, no. Very small entities um, with a couple of hundreds or maybe 10,000 or 15,000 followers. And I, I think this makes perfectly sense because somebody who has already very, very much many fans probably would not buy them their ad paid likes. Um, and we asked many of them, and uh, mostly they, they could not explain it. Um, they, they would never do something like that. Yeah, they, they were completely over asked. But you have to think that we only saw the campaign, the campaigns, the Facebook fan pages. We, we could not see who bought the likes. And as you can imagine, everybody could have done it, like the mother, the brother, the fan, you know, the dog. So this was, a, we, would have needed, well, we would have needed a lot of luck to call anybody out of the blue, and then he would say, oh, yes, I did this. And there was one, or there were some politicians who admitted it, and one of them, she did it also publicly and gave us an interview. Um, is uh, Tanja Kühne. Tanja Kühne, she is a regional politician uh, from uh, Walzrode in Niedersachsen. And she was in the, it was the case that it was after election and she was not very happy with her fan page. That is what she told us. She was very unlucky and she wanted, you know, to, to push herself and to boost it a little bit and, and get more friends and followers and reach. And then she bought 500 uh, followers. And then we had a nice interview with her about that show you a small piece wenn man sich jetzt sozusagen diese likes kauft würden sie sagen das ist betrug ähm, ich würde nicht sagen das ist betrug also es ist ja es ist ein ähm, es ist ein mittel 
der Kommunikation. Und wer die Fälschung nicht bemerke, dem mangele es an Medienkompetenz. Da ähm, ist das Thema Medienkompetenz wirklich gefragt, ähm, sich wirklich zu überlegen, kann das denn überhaupt sein? Also ist äh, sozusagen kein Betrug, wenn man Likes kauft? Ähm, Nochmal, also warum Betrug? Betrug kann es ja nur sein, wenn wir als Gesellschaft sagen, dass das das Maß oder der Maßstab für uns ist, für Beliebtheit. Okay, so you see, answers are pretty interesting and she, I think she was that courageous to speak out to us. Many of others did too, but only on the phone and they didn't want to go on record. But she's not the only one who answered like this, because of course, if you call through a list of potential fake-like buyers, of course they answer like, no, it's not a scam. And I also think um, from a jurisdictional way, it's, it's also very hard to show that this is fraud and a scam, and it's more an ethical um, problem that you can that you can see here that is man manipulative if you buy um, likes. We also found a guy from FDP from the Bundestag, but um, yeah, he <laughs> ran away and didn't want to get interviewed, so I couldn't show show him. Yeah, he bought or not? Probably uh, he he. It was like 40 times in our list for various Facebook posts and videos and also for his Instagram account, but we could not get him on, we could not get him on record. So what did others say? Um, we, of course, confronted Facebook, Instagram and YouTube with this uh, small research and they said, no, we, we don't want to fake likes on our platform. Um, paid likes is active since 2012, you know, so... Uh, they waited seven years, um, and, but after our report, at least Facebook temporarily blocked uh, paid likes. And of course, we asked them too and um, spoke to them and wrote with paid likes in Magdeburg, and they said, of course, it's not a scam because the click workers, they are freely clicking on pages. So, yeah, kind of nobody cares. But paid likes, this is only the tip of the iceberg. So... Um, we also wanted to dive a little bit into this uh, fake like universe outside of paid likes and to see what else is out there. And so we did an analysis of account creation on Facebook. So what Facebook is uh, saying about account creation is that they are very effective against fake accounts. So they say they remove billions of accounts each year and that most of these accounts uh, never reach any real users and uh, they re uh, remove them before they get reported. So what ba Facebook basically wants to tell you is that they have it under control. Um, however, there are a number of reports that suggest otherwise. For example, recently, uh, NATO uh, Stratcom Task Force released a report where they actually bought uh, uh, 54,000 likes, uh, 54,000 uh, social media interactions for just uh, 300 euros. Uh, so this is a very low price and I think you wouldn't expect such a low price if it would be hard to get uh, that many interactions. They bought 3,500 comments. Uh, 25,000 likes, 20,000 views, and uh, 5,100 followers, everything for just 300 euros. So, um, you know the thing they have in common? They are cheap, the fake likes and the fake interactions. So, we also have, uh, an, uh, there was also another report from Wise Germany recently, and uh, they reported uh, on some interesting facts about uh, automated fake accounts. Um, they reported on findings that suggest that actually people use internet or hacked internet of things devices uh, and to use them to uh, create these fake accounts and to manage them. And so um, it's actually kind of interesting to think about this this way to say, okay, maybe uh, next election your fridge is actually going to support the other candidate on Facebook. And um, so we also wanted to look into this and we wanted to go a step further and to look uh, at 
who these people are, who are they, and what what are they uh, doing on Facebook. And um, so we actually examined the profiles of purchased likes. For this, we created four comments under arbitrary posts, and then we bought likes for these comments, and then we examined the resulting profiles of the fake likes. So um, we, it was pretty cheap to buy these likes. Um, comment likes are always a little bit more expensive than other likes. And um, uh, we found all these uh, offerings on Google and uh, we paid with PayPal. So um, we actually used a pretty neat trick to estimate the age of these fake accounts. So as you can see here, um, the Facebook user ID is incremented. So Facebook started in 2009 to use incremented Facebook IDs and uh, they uh, use this pattern of 1000 and then uh, the incremented number. And uh, as you can see in 2009, this uh, incremented number was very close to zero. And then uh, today it is uh, close to 40 billion. And in this time period, um, you can see that uh, you can kind of get a rather fitting line uh, through all these points, and you can see that uh, the likes are in fact incremented. Uh, the, 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 the account IDs are in fact incremented over time. So we can use this fact in reverse to estimate the creation date of an account where we know the Facebook ID. And that's exactly what we did with uh, these um, fake likes. So we estimated the account creation dates and as you can see, we get kind of uh, different results from different services. For example, paid likes, they um, had rather old accounts. So this means they use very authentic accounts um, and we already know that because we talked to them. So um, these are very authentic accounts. Also, like service A over here also uses very, very authentic accounts. But on the other hand, like service B, uses very new accounts. So they were all created in the last three years. So um, if you look at the accounts and also from these numbers, we think that these accounts were bots. And on uh, service C, it's kind of not clear. Are these, are these accounts bots or are these um, click workers? Maybe it's a mixture of both. We don't know exactly for sure. But this is an, an interesting um, metric to uh, measure the age of the accounts to determine if some of them might be bots. And that's exactly what we did on uh, this page. So this is actually a page for garden furniture and we found it in our list uh, that we uh, got from paid likes. So they bought, uh, obviously they were on this list for uh, bought likes on, Facebook, uh, on paid likes and um, they caught our eye because they had uh, one million uh, likes and that's rather unusual for a shop for garden furniture in Germany. And so um, we looked at this page further and we noticed other interesting things. For example, their posts uh, all the time, they got like thousands of likes. And that's also kind of unusual for a garden furniture shop. And so we looked into the likes and uh, as you can see, they all look like they come from Southeast Asia and they don't look very authentic. And uh, we were actually able to uh, estimate the creation dates of these accounts and we found that most of these accounts that were used for liking these posts on this page were actually created in the last three years. So this is a page where everything from the number of people who like the page to the number of people who like the posts is complete fraud. So nothing about this is real and it's obvious that uh, this can happen on Facebook and uh, that this is a really, really big problem. Uh, I mean, this is, a, this is a shop for garden furniture. Uh, obviously, they probably don't have such uh, huge sums of money, so it was probably very cheap to buy this amount of fake accounts and um, 
it's it's really shocking to see how how uh, big how big the scale is of this kind of operations. And so, um, what we have to say is, uh, okay, when Facebook says they have it under control, we have to doubt that. So, now we can look at the bigger picture. And what we are going to do here is we are going to use this same graph that we used before to estimate the creation dates, but in a different way. So we can actually see the, the lowest and the highest points of Facebook IDs in this graph. So we know the newest Facebook ID by creating a new account, and uh, we know the lowest ID because it's uh, zero. And then we know that there are 40 billion Facebook IDs. Now, in the next step, we took a sample, a random sample from these 40 billion Facebook IDs, and inside of this sample, we checked if these accounts exist, if this ID corresponds to an existing account. And we do that because we obviously cannot check 40 billion accounts, uh, 40 billion IDs, but we can check a small sample of these accounts, of these IDs, and estimate then the number of existing accounts on Facebook in total. So for this, we repeatedly access the same sample of one million random IDs over the course of one year. And we also pulled a sample of 10 million random IDs for closer analysis this July. And now Dennis is going to tell you how we did it. Yeah, um, well, pretty interesting, pretty interesting results so far, right? So um, we again implemented a crawler a second time for gathering public Facebook information, uh, fa public Facebook account data. And um, yeah, this was not so easy as in the first case. Um, yeah, as it's not surprising that Facebook is... Um, using a lot of measures to, um, to block the automated uh, crawling of the Facebook page, for example, with IP blocking or uh, capture solving. But uh, we were pretty easy, um, yeah, we could pretty easy solve this problem by uh, using the Tor anonymity network. So every time our IP got blocked by crawling the data, we just uh, made a new um, Tor connection and changed the IP. And this is also with the captures. And with this easy um, method, uh, we were able to, to crawl all the, Facebook, uh, all the public Facebook data. Um, let's have a look at uh, two examples. Um, the first example is uh, facebook.com slash four. So the very, a very small Facebook uh, ID. Um, yeah, in this case, we are, we, we are redirected and check the response and find a valid account page. Um, does anyone know which account this is? Number four. Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, that's correct. Um, yeah, this is, this is a public account from Mark Zuckerberg. Number four, as we see, uh, as we already saw, the other um, IDs are really high, but he got the number four. The yeah, second example was um, yeah, facebook.com slash three. In this case, uh, we are not forwarded, and um, this means that it is an invalid account, and that was really easy to um, confirm with a quick uh, Google search, and uh, it was a test account from the beginning of Facebook. So we did not get redirected, and it's just the login page from Facebook. Um, with these... Um, Examples we did uh, we did a lot of a lot more um, experiments and at the end we were able um, to to build this tree and uh, yeah this tree represents the high level approach from our scraper so in the what's that <laughs> okay He's sleeping yeah we have still time right so <laughs> uh, wait it's Better. Okay, everyone is uh, waking up again. <laughs> so um, yeah, in, in the first step, uh, we call the um, 
the domain uh, www.facebook.com slash FID. If we get redirected in this case, then we check if the, um, if the page is an account page. If it's an account page, then it's a public account, like uh, the example four, and we were able to save the um, raw data, the raw HTTP source. If, we, if it's not an account page, then everything is okay. It is, not, um, it is not a public account, and we are not able to save any data. And um, if, we call, if, we do, uh, if we do not get redirected in the first step, then we call the second domain, um, facebook.com slash profile.php question mark ID equals the FID with the mobile user agent. And um, if we get redirected then, then um, again, it is a non-public profile and we cannot save anything. But, um, and if we get not redirected, it is an invalid profile and it is most often uh, a deleted account. Yeah, and... Um, yeah, that's the high-level overview of our scraper, and Philip will now give some more information on interesting results. So, the most interesting result of this scraping, of this sample of Facebook IDs, was that one in four Facebook IDs corresponds to a valid account. And you can do the math. Uh, there are 40 billion Facebook IDs, so there must be 10 billion registered users on Facebook. And this means that there are more registered users on Facebook than there are humans on Earth. And also it means that um, it, it's, it's even worse than that because not everybody on Earth can have a Facebook account because not everybody, you need a smartphone for that and many people don't have those. So this is actually a pretty high number and it's very unexpected. So in July 2019, there were more than 10 billion Facebook accounts. Also, we did another research on the time frame between October 2018 and today, or this, this month, and we found that in this time frame, there were 2 billion new registered Facebook accounts. Uh, so this is like the time frame of one year, more or less, and in a similar time frame, the monthly active user base rose by only 187 million. Um, Facebook deleted 150 million older accounts between October 2018 and July 2019, and we know that because we pulled the same sample over a longer period of time, and then we watched for accounts that got deleted in the sample, and that enables us to estimate this number of 150 account, million accounts that got deleted that are basically older than our sample. So uh, I made some nice graphs for your viewing pleasure. So um, again, the older accounts were uh, just 150 million were deleted uh, since October 2018. Uh, these are accounts that are older than last year and Facebook claims that since then about 7 billion accounts uh, got deleted from their uh, platform, which is vastly more than these older accounts. And that, that's why we think that Facebook mostly deleted uh, these newer accounts. Um, and if an account is older than a certain age, then it is very unlikely that it gets deleted. Um, also, I think you can see the scales here. So, I, of course, registered users are not the same thing as active users, but you can still see that there are much more registrations of, uh, of new users than there are active users, than there are new active users uh, during the last year. So, what does this all mean? Does it mean that Facebook gets flooded by fake accounts? Um, we don't really know. We only know these numbers. Uh, what Facebook is telling us is that they only count and publish active users. As I already said, that uh, it, there is a disconnect between the uh, reg registered users and the uh, active users. And Facebook only reports on the active users. Also, they say that um, users uh, register accounts but they don't verify them or they don't use them, and that's how this number uh, gets so high. 
but I think that uh, that's not really explaining these high numbers um, because uh, that's just by orders of magnitude larger than anything that uh, this could uh, cause. Also, um, they say that they regularly delete fake accounts, but we have seen that uh, these are mostly accounts that get deleted uh, directly after their creation, and if they survive long enough, then they are getting through. So, what does this all mean? Okay, so you got the full load, which I had like <laughs> over two or three months. And um, what for me was, or for us, was uh, one very big conclusion was that we have some kind of broken metric here. That all the likes and all the hearts on Instagram and the followers, that they can so easily be manipulated. And then it's, it's so hard to tell in some cases, it's so hard to tell if they are real or not real. And this opens the gate for manipulation and for, yes, un untrueness and for economic losses, if you think uh, as somebody who is investing money and, or uh, as an advertiser, for example. Um, and in the very end, it is a case of eroding trust, which means that we cannot trust these numbers anymore. These numbers are, you know, they are so easily, manip they, they can be manipulated and why should we trust this? And um, this has a severe consequence for all the social networks if you are still in them. So what can be a solution? And Philip, you thought about that. So basically we have two problems. One is click workers and one is fakes. Uh, the click workers are basically just hyperactive users and they are selling their hyperactivity. And so what social networks could do is just make interactions uh, scarce, so just lower the value of more interactions. If you are hyperactive users, then your interaction should count less than the interactions of a less active user. Um, that's kind of solvable, I think. The real problem is the authenticity. So if you, um, if you get stopped from uh, posting or liking hundreds of pages a day, then maybe you just create multiple accounts and uh, operate them simultaneously. And this can only be solved by authenticity. So this can only be solved if you know that the person uh, who is operating the account is just uh, one person is operating one account. And this is really hard to do. Uh, because Facebook doesn't know uh, who is clicking. Is it a bot? Is it a click worker? Is it one click worker for 10 accounts? How does this work? And so this is really hard for the, for the social media companies to, uh, to do. And uh, you could say, okay, let's send in the passport or something like that to prove authenticity. But that's actually not a good idea because nobody wants to send their passport to Facebook. And so this is really a hard problem that uh, has to be solved if we want to use uh, social, social media in a meaningful way. And so okay, this is what, what the companies could do. And now yeah, but uh, what, what, do, what, what, what you, you could, do. could do. Okay, of course you can delete your Facebook account or your Instagram account and stop <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> staying away from social media. <laughs> But um, this maybe is not for all of us a solution. So I think um, be aware, of course, spread the word, tell others. And um, <laughs> if, if, you, if you like then, and you get more intelligence about that, we are really happy to dig deeper in these networks and, and we will in go on investigating. And so last but not least, it's to say thank you to you guys. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, we did not do this alone. Uh, we are not three people. There are many more standing behind and doing this, this beautiful research. And we are opening now for questions, please. Yes, Let's please thank uh, Svea, Phil, and uh, Dennis again.
And we have uh, microphones out here in the room, about nine of them actually. Uh, if you line up behind them to ask um, a question, um, remember that a question is a sentence with a question mark behind it. And I think I see somebody at number three, so let's start with that. Um, hi, I, have, I just have a little question. Wouldn't uh, a dislike button, the concept of a dislike button, wouldn't that be a solution too for all the problems? So um, we thought about uh, recommending that Facebook ditches the like button altogether. I think that would be a better solution than a dislike button because a dislike button could also be manipulated. And it would be even worse because you could actually manipulate uh, the network into down-ranking posts or kind of not showing posts to somebody. And uh, that, I think, would be even worse. I imagine what dictators would do with that. And uh, so I think the best uh, option would be to actually uh, not show a, a like, like counts anymore. Uh, to this, um, uh, to actually uh, make people not uh, invest into these counts uh, if they become meaningless. Uh, I think I see a microphone seven all the way up there. Yep. Hello. So one question I had is, um, you assigned uh, creation dates to IDs. How did you do this? <laughs> Uh, so, um, we actually knew the creation date of some accounts and then we uh, kind of interpolated between the creation dates and the IDs. So, you see this black line there, that's actually our, our uh, interpolation. And uh, with this black line, we can then estimate um, uh, the creation dates for IDs that we do not yet know because they, it kind of fills in the gaps. Uh, Follow-up question, um, do you know why there are some points outside of this graph? No. no. Thank you. So there was a question from the internet. Did you report your findings to Facebook and did they do anything? Um, the, because this research is very new, new we, um, we just recently um, approached them and um, yeah, showed them the research and we got an answer, but I think uh, we also already showed the answer. It was um, that they, um, I think, yeah, that they only count um, and publish active users. They, could, they didn't want to tell us how many registered users they have that they say, oh, sometimes users register accounts but don't use them or verify them, and that they regularly delete fake accounts. But we hope that we get into a closer discussion with them soon about this. Microphone two. Um, when hunting down the buyers of the uh, campaigns, did you dig out your own campaign, line below the line? Um, no, because they stopped scraping in August. And I, uh, you stopped scraping in August, and then I, I, I started, you know, I, the whole project started um, with them coming to us with the list. And then we thought, oh, this is very interesting. And then the whole journalistic research started. And, but I think if we, I think if we would do it again, of course, I think we would find us. We also found there was another magazine and they did a, also a test, a paid-like test a couple of years ago and we found their campaign. So, so um, we, we actually did another test and for the other test, I know that we also got like this ID. Uh, I think, and it worked uh, to plug it into the, the, this uh, uh, URL and then we also got redirected to our own page. So that worked, yeah. Thank you. Microphone three. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Farhan. I'm a Pakistani journalist. And first of all, I would like to say that you were right when you <laughs> said that there might be people sitting in Pakistan clicking on the likes. That does happen. Um, but my question would be that Facebook does have its own uh, ad uh, program that it uh, aggressively uh, pushes. Uh, and in that ad program, there is also options whereby people can buy likes and comments and uh, impressions and reactions. Um, did you, would you also consider those as uh, fake, I mean, they're, they're not fake uh, per se, but they're still bought likes. 
So what's your um, uh, view on those? Thank you. So um, when you buy ads on Facebook, then um, so what you, what you actually want to have is fans for your page that are actually interested in your page. So that's kind of the difference, I think, to the, to the uh, paid likes uh, system where the people themselves, they get paid for liking stuff that they wouldn't normally like. So I think that's the fundamental difference between the two programs, and that's why I think that uh, one is un unethical and one is not really that unethical. The, the, the very problem is if you, um, if you buy these uh, click workers, then you have many people in your fan page, they are not interested in you. They don't care about you, they don't look at your products, they don't look at your political party. And then often the people, they additionally, they, they make Facebook ads. And these ads, they are shown again, the click workers, and they don't look at them. So, you know, the people, they are burning money and money and money with this whole corrupt system. So, microphone two. Hi, thanks. Thanks for the talk and thanks for the effort of going through all of this project. Um, from my understanding, this whole finding basically undermines the trust in Facebook's likes per se, in general. So I would expect now the price of likes to drop and the pay for click workers to drop as well. Do you have any metrics on that? The research just uh, went public, I think, one week ago. So, so what we have seen as an effect is that Facebook, they excluded paid likes for, for, for a moment. So yes, of course, one platform is down, but I think there are so many outside. There are so many, so I think... No, I, I meant the phenomenon of mm -hmm. paid likes, not the company itself. The, like the value of a like as a measure of credibility we didn't. Is, is declining now. That's my, that's my assumption. Yes, that's why many people are buying Instagram hearts now. So, so yes, that's true. The like is not the fancy hot shit anymore, yes. And we also saw in the data that the likes for the fan pages, they rapidly um, went down. And the likes for the posts and the comments, they went up. So I think, yes, there, there is a shift. And what we also saw in the data was that uh, the Facebook likes, they, they went down until from 2016, they are rapidly down. And what is growing and rising is YouTube and Instagram. Now everything is about today, everything is about Instagram. Thanks. So let's go to number one. Hello, and thank you very much for this fascinating talk because I've been following this whole topic for a while. And I was wondering, if you were looking also into the demographics in terms of age groups and social class, not of the people who are doing the actual liking, but actually, you know, uh, buying these likes. Because I think that what is changing is an entire social discourse on social capital, in the bold US kind of term, because it can now be quantified. As a teacher, I hear of kids who buy likes to be more popular t f than their other schoolmates. So I'm wondering if you're looking into that, because I think that's a fascinating, fascinating area to actually come up with numbers about. It, it definitely is. And we were also fascinated by this data set of 90,000 data points. And what we did was, and this was very hard, and um, was that we tried, first of all, to look who is buying likes like, are this automotive, you know, to, to are this, um, yeah, what, what kind of branches, uh, who is in that? And so this was, uh, this was doable, but to get more into demographics, um, you would have liked to, to crawl, to click every page. And so we, we did not do this. Uh, what we did was, um, of course, that we, uh, that we were a team of three to 10 people and manually looking into it. And what we, of course, saw that on Instagram and on YouTube, you have many of these very young people, some of them I actually called them, and they were like, yes, I bought likes, very bad idea. Um, so I think, yes, it, I think there is a demographic shift uh, away from the companies and the automotive and industries buying Facebook fan page likes 
to Instagram and YouTube want to be influencers. Influencer culture is obviously yes. affected by this. And I have to admit, here we, we showed you the political side, but we have to admit that the political likes, they were like this small in the numbers, and the very, very vast majority of this data set is about um, wedding planners, photography, tattoo studios, uh, and influencers, 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 and YouTubers, of course. Yes. Thank you so much. So we have a lot of questions in the room. I'm going to get to you as soon as we can, but I'd like to go to the internet first. Do you think this will get better or worse if people move to more decentralized platforms? More what? Uh, if it gets better or worse. Mm. Can you repeat that, please? <laughs> Would this issue get better or worse if people move to more decentralized platform? Decentralized. Decentralized, OK. So, I mean, we can look at, uh, at uh, the, this, this slide, I think, and uh, think about whether decentralized platforms would change any of these two, uh, any of these two uh, points here, and I, I fear I don't, I don't think so, because they uh, cannot solve the, the interactions problem, that people can be hyperactive. Actually, that's kind of a normal thing in social media, that a small portion of social media users is much more active than everybody else. That's kind of, you have that without paying for it. So without even having paid likes, you will have to consider if social media is really kind of representative of the society. But, um, um, and the other thing is authenticity, and also in a decentralized platform, you can have uh, multiple um, uh, accounts run by the same person. So, microphone seven, all the way back there. Hi. Uh, do you know if Facebook even removes the likes when they delete fake accounts? Ah. Do you know? No. Well. We don't know that. No, we don't, we don't know. We know they delete fake accounts, but we don't know if they also delete uh, the likes. I know from our research <laughs> that the people we approached they did not delete the click workers. <laughs> they kept Thanks. them. So microphone two. Yeah, hi. So I have a question with respect to this. Uh, one out of four uh, uh, Facebook accounts are active in your, in your test. Did you see any difference with respect to the age of the account? So uh, is it always one out of four through the entire sample, or does it maybe change over the, uh, over the like going from a zero idea to, well, 10 billion or 40 billion? So you're talking about the density of accounts in our IDs, kind of. So, uh, the, know, yeah. so there, there are changes over time, yeah. So I, th I think um, now it's less than it was before. So now there are less uh, than four than uh, and before it was more. And so I think it was, yeah, I don't know. But you uh, didn't see anything specific that now no. only in the new accounts only one out of ten is active or, or, or valid and before it was one out of two or something like that? It's not that extreme, so uh, it's, it's less than that. It's kind of... Yeah, we, we have to say we did not check this, but uh, there were no special cases. So mm. yeah, but it, it changed over time. So yeah. before it was less and uh, before it was more and now it is less. And uh, so what we checked was whether an ID actually corresponds to an account. And so uh, this metric, uh, yeah, and it changed a little bit over time, but not much. So. so number three, please. Yeah, thank you for a very interesting talk. At the end, you gave some recommendations how to fix the metrics, right? And it's always nice to have some metrics because then, well, we are the people who deal with the numbers, so we want the metrics. But I want to raise the issue whether quantitative measure is actually the right thing to do. So would you buy your furniture from store A with 300 likes against store B with 200 likes? Or would it not be better to have a more qualitative thing? And to what extent is a quantitative measure maybe also the source of a lot of bad developments we see in social media to begin with? even not with bot farms and anything, but just people who go for the quick like and say, hooray for Trump, and then you get whatever, all the Trumpists liking that, and the others say, fuck Trump, and you get all the non-Trumpists like that, and you get all the polarization, right? So Instagram, I think they just 
uh, don't display their like equivalent anymore in order to prevent that. So could you maybe comment on that? I, I think this is a good idea to, to hide the likes, yes. But I, you know, we talked to many click workers and they do a lot of stuff. And what they also do is um, taking comments and doing copy paste for comment section or for Amazon reviews. So, you know, I, I think it's, it's really hard to get them out of the system because uh, maybe if the likes are not shown and if when the comments are counting, then you will have people who are copy-pasting comments in the comments section. So I, I, I really think that the networks, they, they really have an, an issue here. So let's try to squeeze in the last three questions now. Uh, first, number seven, really quick. Very quick. Thank you for the nice uh, insights. And I have a question about the location of the users. So you made your point that you could analyze by the metadata where, uh, when the account was made. But how about the location of the followers? Is there any way to analyze that as well? So we can only analyze that if the users agree to share it publicly. And not all of them do that. Um, I think often a, a name check uh, is often a, a very good way to check where somebody is from uh, for these fake likes, for example. But uh, as I said, it's, it always depends on what the user is, himself is, is willing to share. Okay. Um, Internet? Isn't this just a Western version of the Chinese social credit system? Where do we go from here? What is the future of all this? Yeah, that's a dystopian, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I don't. I, after this research, you know, for for me, I I deleted my Facebook account uh, like one or two years ago. So this this you know this did not matter to me so much, but I stayed on Instagram, and when I saw all this bought likes and abonnements uh, and followers and also YouTube, all these views, this, because the click workers, they also watch YouTube videos. They have to stay on them like 40 seconds. It's really funny because they have hearing like techno music, rap music, all 40 seconds and then they go on. But when I sat next to Harald for two or three hours, uh, I was so delusionated about all the social network things and and I thought, okay, don't count on anything. Just if you like the content, follow them and look at them, but don't believe anything. That was my personal takeaway from this research. So very last question, microphone two. Um, a couple of days ago, the Independent reported that Facebook, the Facebook app was activating the camera when reading a, a news feed. Um, could this be in, uh, used in the context of detecting fake accounts? I don't know. So I think that, um, that in this particular instance that it was probably a bug. So I, I, I don't know, but uh, uh, I mean, the, the people who work at Facebook are not all of them are, are like crooks or anything. They will deliberately program this kind of stuff. So I, they said that it was kind of a bug from, uh, from an, an update that they did. And uh, the question is whether we can uh, actually detect uh, fake accounts with the camera. And the problem is that um, uh, current, I, start, I don't think that current face recognition technology is enough to uh, detect um, uh, that you are a unique person. So there are so many people on the planet uh, that there are probably another person who has the same face. And uh, I think uh, the new iPhone, they also have this much more sophisticated version of this technology. And even they say, okay, there's a chance of one in, I don't know, uh, that there is somebody who can unlock your phone. So I, I think it's really hard to, to do that with, uh, with the current technology to actually prove that somebody is, is just one person. So with that, um, would you please help me uh, thank Svea, Dennis, and Philip. One more time for this fantastic presentation. Very interesting and very, very disturbing. Thank you very much.